Hey folks, what's up? And today I'm finally going to do my year-end list of my top 50 favorite songs of 2018. Uh, you know, if you can recall, my favorite song in 2017 is Fleet Fox's 3rd of May, Odaiga Hera. And uh, before we start off talking about my favorite songs here, um, I just want to talk about great songs that are in albums released this year, but they aren't really released in 2018, such as Lewis Cole's Weird Part of the Night, released in 2016. It's a very catchy, funky, weird uh, pop jam. It's awesome. Also want to give a shout out to Car Seat Headrest with Beach Life and Death, which is a very emotional, sentimental, epic indie rock jam that is multifaceted. And I also want to uh, give a shout out to MGMT with Lil Dark Age, uh, released last year. Uh, it's in my top 50 songs list last year. Uh, it's such a catchy synth funk pop jam. I love it. And um, other than that, let's get into the list. There are so many great songs this year. I can name 150. However, I can only narrow it down to top 50 and there can only be one entry per artist. So, you know, so here are the honorable mentions. Wow. Proto Martyr, Wheel of Fortune, featuring Kelly Deal. Uh, Andrew WK with the very positive and loud and optimistic music is worth living for. Flatbush Zombies with Headstone. Moses Sumney with Rank and File. Leon Bridges with the emotional and soulful Bet Ain't Worth the Hand. Kitten with the catchy Pink Champagne. Poppy with Time Is Up featuring Diplo. It's catchy, but it's a little too sanitized, maybe. John Hopkins with the <clears throat> futuristic Emerald Rush. Muse with the very catchy and fun Pressure. Metric with Dark Sunday. Chance the Rapper with Work Out. Rome Fortune with Hoodrich Disco. Kurt Vile with Loading Zones. Petit Noir from South Africa with Blame Fire. Trippy Red with the very catchy and well-performed Topanga. The very destructive diss track, Pusha T, the story of Addy Don, even though he's rapping over Jay-Z's The Story of OJ. And also another really destructive diss track, Eminem with Killshot. Also want to shout out to Screaming Females with Glass House, a very strong opener to their latest album, Spiritual Cramp. I really want to put this song in the list. It's such a fun, mutinous, weird art punk tune. I feel bad being me. Basement with the emotional indie rock jam, Disconnect. Joji with slow dancing in the dark. I also really want to put this onto the list. It's so, it's it's a really beautiful song. And Igloo Ghost with the mind-bending, super speed, clear Tame. Here are the top 50 songs of the year. Number 50, Tend to give it to Travis Scott with Stargazing. You know, I'm not a huge trap fan, but um, this song is really good. It's euphoric, it's dreamy, and it's psychedelic. At 49, I'm giving it to Zeal and Ardor with the song Don't You Dare, which is uh, a very, very smart and natural bl blend of death metal and black soul music. And um, it, it hits hard. It really hits hard. At 48, I'm giving it to the short but very emotional and painful Tony Molina with Nothing I Can Say. At 47, I'm giving it to the very um, the, the gospel song, Young Fathers, In My View. And uh, I just love how drunken the instrumentals are and the performance. They are really, really intimate. At 46, I'm giving it to J.I.D. with Off D's featuring J. Cole. The energy level of the song is off the roof. The flow by J.I.D. is awesome. And at number 45, I'm giving it to the very catchy but brutally honest Lewis Cole with when you're ugly, no one's gonna talk to you. And at number 44, I'm giving it to the bombastic and destructive OCs with Overthrown. It's almost metal, but not quite. And at 43, I'm giving it to the very catchy Brockhampton with Honey, with a very steady beat and some really interesting samples. One time for ya, one time for ya. At number 42, I didn't expect 
myself to put this on the list, but it's Ariana Grande with the album opener Blazed. The beat is very fluffy. The performance by Ariana and Pharrell Williams is also very energetic. A lot of chemistry. It's very catchy. And at 41, it's the very glitzy, glossy, overblown pop song Adam and the Evil by Clarence Clarity. Yeah, that song grew a lot on me. And at number 40, I'm giving it to Tom York with the lead soundtrack, lead, lead theme song for the Suspiria remake movie, Suspirium. It's haunting, it's dark. And at 39, again, didn't expect myself to put this on this list, but it's Mark Ronson and Miley Cyrus with Nothing Breaks Like a Heart, which is a very, very catchy 70s throwback pop song. Such a banger, and uh, it's... It's not the very fun and uplifting banger as well. It's sci It's kind of sad. And then at 38, I'm giving it to 21 Pilots with Levitate. The flow by Tyler Joseph is awesome. And the instrumentals are very lavishing and colorful. I love it. At 37, it's Lizzo with Boys. Very, very catchy and charismatic song. It's, uh, it's very stripped back, but it's such a catchy and funky jam. And uh, at 36, it's a tie between fun, exclamation mark, and outside, exclamation mark, by Vince Staples. The flow is amazing. Vince Staples totally kills it with his personality. And the beats produced by Kenny Beats are really, really catchy. At number 35, I'm giving it to the Courtney Barnett song, Nameless Faceless, which is a very soothing and catchy indie tune. And uh, it has a circus feeling to it. I like it. At 34, I'm giving it to one of my favorite pop songs I've heard all year. Kali Uchis with Your Teeth in My Neck. The beat of the thing. This thing is awesome. Kali Uchis' performance is sexy and slick. And at 33, I'm giving it to Only Acting by Kiro Kiro Bonito. Which is a very meat and potatoes and loud and fun uh, alt-rock pop song with a very cutesy performance from Sarah, the vocalist. And the lyrics are pretty smart on this track as well. At number 32, it's horrendous with Soothsayer, the album opener for their uh, latest album. Whoa! Whoa! This technical death track is so destructive. It's so loud, but yet so raw and natural. The growls on this thing is very natural as well. At 31, I'm giving it to the very weird and quirky Curious by The Voids. The first half is a very weird um, Arabic synth funk pop, and at the second half, it's it becomes this super watery but catchy uh, ending, outro. It's weird. At number 30, I um, it's JPEG Mafia with real... I mean, I know it's not the N-word exactly, but I'm still not going to say it. Real African-American, okay? Old Dirty Bastard being sampled on this track. His scream is awesome. The beat is super speed, and JPEG Mafia's flow is full of energy. It's awesome. 29, Gorilla Toss with the very catchy and funky Jackie Stodder. The synths are very uh, swirly, and I like the chorus where the vocals are sort of layered. And um, at number 28, it's the uh, very awesome track from Kanye West and Kid Cudi. That is Kitsy Ghosts with Fourth Dimension. The sampling is creative and catchy uh, and also very empowering. The sound effects on this track are amazing. The production is quality and the performance by Kid Cudi is spot on. His cold-blooded performance is really, really awesome. I mean... Shout out to Kid Cudi. At 27, I'm giving it to Everything Everything with Bread Winner, which is a very um, loud and overblown pop song with a chorus that's super sticky, super catchy, and it has this bittersweet, well, not exactly bittersweet, but definitely bitter taste to it, but yet it's very catchy. At 26, I'm giving it to Jack White with Over and Over and Over, which is such a fun and raw and quick rock banger over and over bam bam ba -da -da -ba -da. the guitars playing on this thing is spot on and the you know and the eccentric vocal harmonies in the choruses is awesome and then at number 25 
Rosalia or Rosalia with Pienso en tu mira. Uh, I I think about your your gaze. It's um it's a really really catchy and uh, beautiful Spanish flamenco inspired pop song. The verses are extremely beautiful and the chorus is actually super catchy and snappy. I love the beats. They are all flamenco claps and um, I also really love the low key bow, 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 sound effects. And at number 24, I'm giving it to Beach House with Lemon Glow. Oh boy, one of my favorite dream pop songs all year. It's transcendent. It's futuristic yet it has a human side to it. It's super catchy. And during the chorus, when, when you know, we enter the passage of keys and synths, it feels like being thrown into a tunnel of weird neon lights. It's really, really awesome of a track. At number 23, I'm giving it to the Australian psych rock band Tropical Fuckstorm with the track Chameleon Paint, which is ugly, gross, nasty, but also very catchy and groovy. Uh, garage rock track and um, it has some brutally honest lyrics as well. At number 22, I'm giving it to Albert Hammond Jr. with Muted Beatings, which is um, released earlier in the year and it's a very youthful and exciting indie rock tune and the performance by Albert Hammond Jr. is very animated on this track, very energetic as well. And at number 21, Father John Misty, aka Josh Tillman, is back with Mr. Tillman, which is a very fun and smart uh, indie folk song with some of the most hilarious lyrics I've uh, came across all year. And I just love Josh's persona and charisma on this track. It's amazing. At number 20, we're in the top 20, folks. Florence and the Machine with hunger. We all got a hunger. It's so catchy. It's so soulful. It's so beautiful. The piano is on this thing. It's glistening. And the performance by Florence, I believe, is the, is the, is the woman. Awesome. Really awesome. And at 19, oh, the most badass song of the year, We Appreciate Power by Grimes featuring Hannah. Wow. <laughs> this is the song that you would make when you when you're dating Elon Musk, but wow, the the lyrics on this thing are really smart. They talk about AI and how they will take over humans and they're really dark and dystopian. The guitars and the keys on this thing are raw and I just love the new metal influences on this track. They are amazing. And the bridge is intergalactical and the, the choruses and 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 the keys Ha, ah, they are awesome. They are empowering. At number 18, I'm giving it to Mannequin by HMLTD, aka Hate Music, Last Time Delete. Uh, it's such a fun song. It's about falling in love with a mannequin, and um, it's super catchy. I love the keys, the drums, the musicianship is super on point, and um, just go listen to it. It's such a catchy, sticky, fun synth pop song. And at number 17, MGMT with their album opener, She Works Out Too Much, which is a very nimble and uh, lighthearted and fun synth pop song as well. And it's about uh, breaking up with your girlfriend because you you didn't work out enough. And that's actually really relatable because I, I don't work out enough at all, actually. The synths on this track is amazing. And uh, the performance by... Uh, by um I forgot the name Andrew Wingarden I think um really really funny and at number 16 I'm giving it to the epic album opener by Kamasi Washington Fists of Fury which is basically the rendition of the theme song for the Bruce Lee film a long long time ago and it's multifaceted it's really jazzy and fun but yet it it really has the 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 spirit that the original theme the title theme has and uh, i just love how the pianos and the saxophones on this track uh, intersect with each other and the pianos on this thing is full of emotions full of up and downs and at number 15 blood orange with saint uh, i really love the stiff beat on this thing they actually work really well against the very loose keyboards and um 
it's very nocturnal. It's very emotional and beautiful as well. And the vocal harmonies at the tail end of the track are very heart touching. And um, yeah, shout out to Dev Hines. Uh, at number 14, summer song of the year, Black Balloons, Denzel Curry. Super catchy, super fun, and Gold Link's performance is not that bad as well. And Denzel Curry talks a lot about black balloons on this track, which is basically bad things in life and how you would face over them. But still, the song is very, very, very catchy. It's very fun, and I love it. Let it flow, 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 let it flow by me. And at number 14, also super catchy, I'm giving it to Janelle Monet with Screwed. Um, I know Make Me Feel is awesome, but I just find myself liking Screwed over all the other tracks here. Um, because uh, A, it's, it's the catchiest song in my opinion, and B, it's, um, it's a very smart and fun song about having sex, but in a, in a female empowering perspective. Janelle Monet and Zoe Kravitz performance here and their charisma and their persona here are really witty, really slick, and uh, it's it's like These Walls by Kendrick Lamar, but the female version. It's really that good. And at number 12, I don't know why, but I love this song so much. Ed Schrader's music beat with Dunce, which is a very stripped back skeletal rock song um yeah it's it's very stripped back we get these guitars and these very minimalistic beats and then they the and then the duo would just make a song out of it but it's super energetic it's super exciting and fun it's kind of crazy and the guitar solo on this track is very playful and fun and it almost has a futuristic taste to it and the performance by Ed Schrader's goes from whispering to loud screaming it's um it's like uh energy you've been accumulating for a while but exploding all at once and at number 11 I'm giving it to US Girls with Rosebud um my favorite track off of her latest album and um it's such a catchy and sweet and soothing tune it's a uh, it's a dream pop at its finest in 2018, in my opinion. This track is awesome. It's beautiful. The verses and the choruses flow to each other really smoothly, really naturally, really seamlessly, and I also really love the sound effects. Uh, you know, the performance by the vocalist Meg on this track um, actually is actually really well complemented by the instrumentals. Her high pitch vocals are really outstanding on this track as well and um yeah what else can i say it's super catchy super fun and i can't stop replaying this song it's so good it's lavishing it's expensive it's luscious it's um it's very very sweet and endearing ear candy but i'm gonna be talking about my top 10 10 favorite songs of 2018 oh my gosh these 10 songs picked so carefully so 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 carefully uh yeah at number 10 childish gambino this is america and um yeah it's uh fantano's favorite song of the year and it's also one of my favorite songs of the year um first of all donald glover his talents his talents! Not only an actor, but also a director and writer of Atlanta, one of the best TV shows of the year. And he also dropped This Is America, which has become one of the biggest hit songs of the year. The music video is awesome. One of the best of the decade. The choreography is on point. It's amazing. And the song is awesome. The beat is very murky. It's a trap beat, but with a very heavy industrial taste to it. Um, the lyrics, while they are more simplistic and minimal, they are very meaningful, and when they are sung by Donald Glover, it's super catchy. Um, and you know, the song talks about how violent and dystopian America is right now, and, uh, and uh, I just love how, um, you know, Childish Gambino talks about the USA with facts, that is, the mass shootings 
that are very tragic and I'm so happy that there aren't any, you know, shootings in Hong Kong. And the energy of Donald Glover on this thing, wow, wow. And uh, I also really love how these trap rap verses are, you know, are sandwiched by these very soulful choir uh, vocals. They go together really naturally for some reason. And uh, the ending is really spooky as well. Love it. This is America. Don't catch you slipping now. Don't catch you slipping now. Look what I'm whipping now. At number nine, Daughters with their album Ender. Guest House. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Guest House. Guest fucking house. Wow. This song just blows my fucking eardrums into all the pieces. I don't even know what I'm trying to say right now, but this album ending is obliterating. It's destructive. It's the most destructive song I've heard in my life. <laughs> it's noise rock in its noisiest, but yet it's melodic as well. The performance by Alex S.F. Marshall is, it's like life is being drained out of him. It's like his soul is being crushed while recording the song. It's insane. The drums are bombastic and loud as well. And the guitars on this thing just on fire. And that's an understatement. <laughs> wow, this song. And when Alex S.F. Marshall was screaming, Let me in! Let me in! We also get these uh, very crazy horns and strings, and they are almost like a, a dark humor, a sense of dark humor, because it's like the song is so fucking dark, it's beginning to be funny. It's kind of crazy. And the ending of the song, it's just uh, a very loud and, and thick wall of strings that are super dystopian, super apocalyptic, and it's like the entire world is falling apart. <laughs> wow. This song really, really, really blows my eardrums, and I love it. And the lyrics are really dystopian and dark as well, and the way Alex screams, you know, knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking. It's just, wow. It's like being trapped outside of a house and someone's coming after you, but you can't go into the house and hide. It's, um, it's very scary. It's very dark. Wow. At number eight, Idols, Colossus. Uh, there are a lot of great idol songs this year. Danny Nadelko, which is a very forward-thinking, catchy rock tune about uh, anti-Brexit. And Samaritans is awesome as well, which is anti-toxic masculinity. But this song is what takes the cake for me. Whoa! <laughs> Joe Talbot on this thing is awesome. Uh, you know, his raspy and raw vocals are, are backed up really well by these drums and guitars that builds up uh, bit by bit in the song and it just gets more and more intense more and more intense and more and more angry and then when it's about to hit the climax the song suddenly stops and we and we are treated with silence for a few seconds until it explodes into a very loud and fun and angry and raw and nasty uh album ending it's uh it's really 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 exciting adrenaline pumping and um the lyrics on on the song it's uh, more personal it deals with joe talbot's family and his relationship with his father and um other things as well and uh they are so well executed so well performed and i just i just love it i just love it and um yeah, the, the way the ending shocks us and surprises us. It's one of the best things that came out of music in 2018. And I also really like the abrupt ending. And... Whoa. 
at number seven. At number seven, Ghost with Rats. Oh, wow. Didn't expect Ghost to come out with such a good song, even though they have been through such a such a, a tumble before releasing Prequel, their latest album. And the Rats is such an awesome and catchy heavy metal track, and it's very solid as well. The drums, the guitars, they are awesome, and they have this occult theme to it, uh, like, uh, you know, all the other ghost songs. Uh, the performance by Tobias Forge is better than ever, in my opinion. And uh, the music video is awesome. It's nasty. The song itself is also very nasty. And uh, the drum solo, the guitar solo, the keyboard solo, they all go together within one song. And it's all compacted really well. Ah, uh, man. There are endless things to compliment about this track. It's such a, it's such a special track. And um, it's, it's an awesome Ghost album opener. It has this epic religious vibe to it that's just unescapable inevitable it's really really awesome and also super catchy if you want to get into heavy metal listen to ghost listen to this song and also square hammer counting down to number six ice age painkiller featuring sky ferrera i don't know why but I just love this song so fucking much. The instrumentals are so rich and tasteful on this thing. The horns is such a great touch. And the chemistry between Elias Hunenfell and um, Sky Ferreira on this thing is amazing. And I just love how sloppy the song sounds, but yet so cohesive and coherent it is. And uh, it's so tasteful, it's so catchy, and um, it's awesome. And at number five, I'm giving it to the very funky and catchy and fun and uh, awaken, Wide Awake by Parquet Courts. Yes, folks, we are in the top five, and uh, Parquet Courts takes the cake. This song rocks and i also want to want to tie this with total football which is um equally as funky and as fun and uh, total football is even longer even louder even more aggressive i just love both total football and wide awake can't stop replaying both of these songs um it's wide awake is way more skeletal way more stripped back the guitars are super funky and uh, the drums on this thing Whoa, the drums on this thing is awesome. Bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. The performance by all the band members here are super energetic, super exciting, and uh, the song really sounds like being awake, wide awake. And uh, yeah, what, what else can I say about the song other than it's a great highlight of the year? Number four, easily my favorite electronic track of the year, City Fade by Against All Logic, which is basically an, a, a nickname for Nicholas Jar, which is, I'll say it, one of the best electronic producers of the decade. Dude, Nicholas Jar? Oh? Yeah, Chilean French electronic producer Nicholas Jar came out with... Uh, with an album this year under the name of Against All Logic. And City Fade is perhaps my favorite track. The drop of this thing is awesome. Nothing too uh, commercial, nothing too crappy, nothing too anticlimactic. The beats on this thing flow super well. They are sort of, uh, you know, watery and washed out. And it's uh, super catchy and super groovy as well. The, the way the sample is being sampled onto the track is awesome. It fits super well with the with the melodies, with the beat. It's um it's truly a spectacular electronic track that just instantly clicks. It's really really catchy, really sticky. And the way the drum beat sort of breaks in the middle of the track and it breaks into all these different weird sound effects is such an ear candy. It's like going through a weird and fun wormhole of drum beats. It's 
awesome. And then we hit the top three. Three songs that blows my mind. Anderson Pack, Tints featuring Kendrick Lamar. First of all, the charisma by Anderson Pack and Kendrick Lamar is so amazing. Their chemistry here is also very on point, and it's one of the best duos of the year. And um, the, the synth funk throwback of this track is just super catchy. Super sticky, and uh, the chorus of this thing, round and round and round the open street, I need tints. The double vocals, the lyrics, the uh, the beat, the instrumentals, everything about this track is awesome and spot on and outstanding. What can I say? And we're in the top two. I was in a lot of struggle trying to place number one, and number two, because they're both so fucking good. I want to put them both in number one spot, but I just, I just can't. Um, so, you know, I listened to all of these songs for weeks and weeks and weeks to finalize the list, and it took me such a long time to decide which one's better, number one or the number two track. And... I'm going to tell you what my number two song of the entire year is. James Blake with If the Car Besides You Moves Ahead. Yeah, you probably don't expect me to put this song onto this list, but now it's a number two. Wow, this song. This song is something else, man. This song is something else. It's released earlier in the year during winter, and um, it was... During a time when I was not in a great mood, um, and it was very cold, and and um, yeah, I listened to this song, and I just get this very, very strong feeling of isolation and alienation all of a sudden. It's so cold, it's so lonely, but yet the song is so beautiful. So James Blake released this song very earlier on in the year. And um, it's it's a very special song for James Blake because it's all chopped up. All the vocals are chopped up. And uh, the instrumentals are, as always, very sad, very dark. And in this track, it's very futuristic. And uh, the synths, they are, they are a little, they're a little distorted, a little compressed. And uh, it sounds very, very cold. And... Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's magical. This song, it's gorgeous. It's super gorgeous. And um, when I was listening to the song, the very chopped up vocals and the very um, the very faint beat, it touches me in the heart in a very weird way. And I just can't describe the feeling. It's so good. And um, I just I just love how you know. Originally, James Blake vocals are falsetto and very, uh, you know, pr very overproduced and chopped up. But in the middle, his real voice comes out. It's deep. It's faint. It's sort of hidden in the back. And it's like this one bare moment of truth. It's awesome. But you know, my number one favorite song of the year, I have to give it to Death Grips with Black Paint. Black! Yeah, Death Grips has came out with a lot of great songs in the decade. On GP, Tachyon, Inanimate Sensation, I've Seen Footage, and Black Paint is also an awesome song. It just grows on you. It, their new album grows on you significantly, in fact. And this song in particular just blows my mind at how good in every way it is. Wow. First of all, Death Grips, they are an experimental rap rock trio. And this song, it's, uh, it's more rock oriented. And um, where do I start talking about this song, to be honest? Okay. First of all. 
MC Ride, aka Stefan Burnett's performance here, as always, very destructive, uh, very nasty, very aggressive, obliterating, and uh, eardrums blowing. It's awesome. But then he's also backed up with such destructive and strong and powerful guitars. Uh, I believe Justin Chancellor, bassist of Tool, is also on this thing. Wow. Wow. The vocals and the guitars going together, they are super empowering, super loud. And uh, I just love how uh, the verses are super intense, super uh, weird and eccentric. And then when it blows into the chorus, it becomes super explosive and it's very empowering. It's very uplifting and um, it's angry. And uh, and then the breaks between the choruses and the verses, the drums, the way they skip around is awesome. Zach Hill is super skillful and talented drummer. And the uh, beats, the other uh, electronic bits and the scratches by Andy Moore, and they are very awesome, memorable, and sticky on this track as well. This track is both very empowering and loud and aggressive, but there are also weird, eccentric, quirky things about this track that stand out to me. And the boom, boom, booms by MC Ride, they are just so awesome. They are just... I, I can't even describe it with words. They are just... It hits you hard. It punches you. And uh, I also really like the overall instrumentals and the sound effects uh, on the track. They are very articulate as well. And uh, the instrumentals, it's its almost, it's weird. It's, its I don't know how in the world did it come out with this, with this, uh, you know, with this instrumental. Uh, but it's just this industrial uh, cloud of of noise compacted together and it's sort of hanging right there it's uh it's something special man it's something special and um i'm just gonna leave it at that death grips black paint favorite song of the year <laughs> So, what's your favorite song of the year? Comment below and please subscribe. And thanks for watching. And best albums tomorrow.